same type of steppe politics was simple enough. When one of the tribes became too strong, the other tribes were united against it. The variety of unions was explained by a large number of inter-clan relations. Unity or dissension of clans in the same tribe as well as friendship or rivalry of leaders. Transitions of his army were not measured in kilometers, but in degrees of latitude and longitude. The whole Christian world quaked to one name, Genghis Khan, and Muslims were convinced that all his actions were actions of a supernatural creature. Rustan Rahman Aliyev, the Turks' empire, great civilization. After a thousand years of Turkic power in the territory of present-day Mongolia and throughout Central Asia, time of the Mongols came. Mongolia may be considered as the most eastern part of the Eurasian steppe area, which stretches from Manchuria to Hungary. Since ancient times, this steppe area has been a cradle land of various nomadic tribes of Iranian, Turkic, Mongolian and Manchurian origin. Approximately up to the year 1000, Mongolian tribes were part of ancient Turkic state Zhenu. From 6th to 8th century, they were part of the great Turkic Kaganate. From 8th to 9th century, of the Uyghur Kaganate. After dissolution of the Uyghur Kaganate, the Uyghurs left Karakorum, and small Mongolian and Turkic tribes remained on the territory of present day Mongolia. For centuries, Mongol warriors, along with the Turks, went to campaigns against their common enemy, the Chinese Empire. As the Turks' vessels, in the early period the Turks had control over Mongolia, the Mongols participated in almost all military campaigns. Joint military campaigns, coexistence and, as a result, miscegenation, all these were certainly reflected in customs and traditions of the Turks and Mongols. The term Mongol Tatars is quite artificial. The name Mongols, as Menu or Menva, is mentioned in all and new histories of Tang Chinese dynasty 618-908. Ancient Mongols came from Shiwei tribes. Shiwei, one of the Kitan ethnic groups, occupied the area from the Great Wall of China from south to north and were at various stages of cultural development. That part of Shiwei tribes, which was called the Mongols, lived a nomadic life in steppe areas to the south of the lower reaches of the Argun and the upper reaches of the Amur. After the fall of the Uyghur Kaganate, the middle of the 9th century, ancient Mongols began to move to the west, to the territory of present-day Mongolia. После того, как Чингис Хан образовал государство на территории Центральной Азии в 1206 году, Курултай был созван, и его избрали там как бы главой да, этого имени. After Genghis Khan formed a state on the territory of Central Asia in 1206, Kurultai was called, and he was elected head of this union. Then Chinese officials, who closely followed what was happening there, began to call them Mongol Tatars. It was due to the fact that Genghis Khan conquered the Tatar tribes who lived to the north from China, near Halha River. Then the term Mongol Tatars appeared in the state paperwork of China. However, the Mongols, after formation of the single state, called themselves Mongols. But for the Chinese, all peoples who led a nomadic life were the Tatars. 
The Tatars, their restless neighbors, were numerous tribes. Then they even moved into our territory. All Turkic tribes gradually became known as the Tatars. Nowadays, people try to avoid the term Mongol Tatar, because it creates a certain confusion. As it is known, in the middle of Volga region, a large Turkic ethnic group of the Russian Federation, the Tatar lives, who in origin were the Bulgars. Then this ethnonym became the name of their ethnic group. There is a mistake here, we know, for example, that the Tatar tribe lived in the territory of Mongolia. In the 8th century, Persian historian Gardizi, in his book Zayn al-Akbar, wrote that there was a sea of mysteries. He explained the origin of the Kimaks as follows. The Tatar ruler had two sons. When their father died, they stood in opposition to each other, and the younger brother went to the east, to the Irtish, the western part of Altai. With him, there was only a woman who served him. A year later, when he returned to his camp, he saw seven people who had come from their tribesmen. They said that they were attacked by enemies who nearly destroyed them, and those who remained fled to the mountains. We know that the Tatars were under Genghis Khan before formation of the Mongolian state. The Chinese always pitched the nomads against each other, thus they kept their northern border in safety. Late in the 1190s, the Tatars threatened northern China, and so the Chinese emperor turned to Kiriyat Khan to rule. As it is known, Timujin had become his adopted son before that. And when Togrul went against the Tatars, Timujin with his troop was in his composition, because his father had died at the hands of the Tatars. They poisoned him. If anyone wishes to describe the Tatars, he will have to describe many tribes, for they bear this common name only in their faith. They are themselves are different tribes, distant from each other. Sigismund Herberstein Ancient Turkic and Islamic written traditions spread the name Tatars to all Mongolian-speaking and Turkic-speaking tribes, thus turning this ethnonym into the Konum Politonym. The term Tatars through ancient Uyghurs entered Chinese language and was regularly recorded in Chinese texts since 842. Meanwhile, at the turn of 60s, 70s of the 12th century, with the connivance of Chinese authorities, the Tatars defeated the Mongols, and the name Mongol almost disappeared in Mongolia itself, replaced by the name Tatars. However, early in 13th century, Genghis Khan was able to defeat the Tatar army. In Secret Story, Mongolian Chronicle of 1240, about this event Genghis Khan stated. We smashed the hated enemies, the Tatars, these killers of our fathers and grandfathers. Genghis Khan. The name Mongol in Muslim sources Mogol or Mogul 
was not only restored, but since the time of Genghis Khan began to be used as the official name of the dynasty and the state since 1211 and later also as the name of the people. According to bards of the Mongolian steppes, a wolf and a fellow deer were the first progenitors of royal clans before Genghis Khan. These emblematic animals were often found cast in bronze in numerous settlements of Siberia. The wolf was a totem animal of great ancient myths of Turkic Mongolian peoples. You can be surprised at the sight of a fellow deer coupled with a wolf, a predator whose prey is often is. But obviously, it is a case of a symbolic union of wolf's male properties, strength and courage, with a fellow deer's female virtues, agility and grace. Among the myths dated back to Genghis Khan's ancestors, there is a legend which is connected both with animals and the sun. So, from the union of a wolf and a fellow deer, a woman named Alan Kua was born. Then she was fertilized by sun beam which penetrated through the smoke hole in the roof of the ute and touched the woman's belly, and from it came out the great Khan's ancestors, Mongol Nirunz, including Bodon Chara, Genghis Khan's ancestor, in the eighth generation. The fact is that there is a thing, a nomadic life. The nomadic life of life involves movement after herds, movement on the hunting territory. Nomads had similarities with the natural environment. The wolves also graze, figuratively speaking, their flock, call it and eat it. Therefore, in many legends, the wolf is a sacred creature, grazing flocks and leading the people. He is the founder of many Turkic states. In particular, there is a Bashkir epic which states that the Bashkirs moved for a long time and couldn't find a place of living, and then went out a wolf which led the Bashkir people to the territory where they settled. So the wolf is a leader, guiding force, protector. Therefore, all modern Turkic peoples consider the wolf their protector, benefactor and guide. Genghis Khan's ancestor Borte Tsino, Blue Wolf, born of heaven, which is in the sky, for heaven's command, his wife is Koai Marau, Red Fellow Deer. They came here from overseas. When he pitched her camp at the source of Onon River, near Burhan Haldun mountain, there was born of them Bataki Khan. Tamaka was Bataki Khan's son, and there was born Tamaka's son Korikar Mergan. Korikar Mergan's son was Ayuam Borou. The Secret Story of the Mongols The Turks were not much different from the Mongols. Since olden times, they had tribal federations which united Altai steppe dwellers, Turks, Mongols and Tanguses. The distance between two different Turkic tribes is no longer than between Turkic and Mongolian tribes. And though their languages are not similar to each other, they have the same syntactic system, which involves the same reasoning system.
The Turkic close relatives, born as they were in the spiritual environment of shamanism, settled on the same land where they received their energy for several hundred years. The Mongols began to be organized and to ensure their superiority. They had a long and painful pregnancy period and it ended with the birth of a giant. For a long time, Orhon and Selenga rivers hadn't engendered anything, but there were accumulated active forces, which were to break out soon. In the meantime, before Genghis Khan, relatively strong states formed by Mongolian tribes, Xiangbi in eastern Mongolia, first to fourth centuries, and Khitans in Mongolia, Manchuria and northern China, ninth century, failed to play a leading role in the steppe politics. So, in the late 12th century, the map of Asia represented the following picture. China was divided into two empires. Southern China was ruled by Song dynasty. The north was controlled by the Manchurian conquerors Churchens, who settled in Beijing in 1125. They were known as the Golden Dynasty, Qin. In the northwestern part of China, in the present-day Ordos and Gansu, there was formed Tangut Kingdom, Si Hua of Tibetan tribes. In the northwestern part of China, in the present day Ordos and Gensu, there was formed Tangut Kingdom, Si Hia of Tibetan tribes. In the northeastern part of Tarim, from Turfan to Kucha, lived the Uyghurs, civilized Turks, absorbed the Buddhist and Nestorian cultures. Regions of Lake Isuku, River Chu and Kashgaria were empire of Karakitais, people of Angolan race and Chinese culture. Mawarana in Duran almost entirely belonged to sultans of Khorezm, Turks by race, Muslims by religion. They were brought up in the spirit of Arab Persian culture. Then the rest part of Muslim Asia was divided between the Abbasid Caliphs of Baghdad, Ayyubid Sultans of Clan of Kurdish race and Arab culture, Syria and Egypt, and Sultan Siljuks of Turkic race and Iranized culture, Asia Minor. It was already settled Asia. Beyond it, in the north, near Siberian Mongolian borders, in steppes to the north of Gobi and foothills of Altai, Kunge and Kantao roamed many tribes belonging to the three branches of Altai race, Turkic, Mongolian and Tungus. The Huns broke away. They went to the west, then came the Jujuans, future Avars. The Huns came to the territory of present-day Kazakhstan. The Usuns moved there when the Huns with Usuns defeated Yuchi, who then went to the south and formed the Kushan Empire on the territory of present-day Afghanistan up to India. And the Usuns moved there. Then the northern Huns came. In the second century, peoples began to migrate farther to the west. In the second fifth centuries, there was a great migration. Then the Turks formed Tele Union and also moved to the territory of Kazakhstan. The Turks split into western and eastern. Then the Karluks came after Atar battle. After the Karluks, the Karakitais came. They created a state. At first they conquered together, and so it was like a boiler, from which Turkic-speaking and Mongol-speaking tribes came out all the time. The Huns were proto-Turks. After them, Xiangvi and Jujuans arose. They were Mongol-speaking tribes. Then Turkic-speaking tribes appeared, empires were forming all the time, and all were going to the west. Yeah. 
You are millions, we are zillions, try to take on us. Yes, we are citizens. Yes, we are Asians with slant and greedy eyes. Alexander Block. It is impossible to determine the exact whereabouts of many of these tribes. Let's try to localize them presumably. One of the main Turkic Mongol peoples, Naimans, lived in all probability in the area of present-day Kopdo and Upsa Nor to the Black Urtish and in Zaisan Nor up to the upper reaches of the Selenga. Jean-Paul Roux pointed out that the Naimans were Turks experiencing a deep Mongolization and in an unstable position between Turkic-speaking and Mongolian-speaking they were under influence of both Uyghur Nestorianism and Shamanism. Among them, there were many adherents of Nestorianism. In Jaha Kushai, it is even said that in the early 13th century, one of the Khans, famous Kuchluk, was brought up in the spirit of that religion. However, secret story testifies that shamans also had a huge impact on the Naimans because during a war they could cause a storm and other destructive phenomena. Найманы – это было крупное объединение, которое жило на территории Монголии к моменту, когда Чингисхан начался. The Bans were a large union. They lived in the territory of Mongolia by the time when Genghis Khan began his activity. They were defeated and fled to Semirechia, and the ruler of the Kitans, the Karakita Empire, took Kushluk. Moreover, Kushluk became his son-in-law. Then he staged a coup, and it was the end of the Karakita Empire. There were internal reasons, fragmentation, etc. They settled on the territory of Semirechia. It is said that it was the Naiman Khanate. I think this was a confederation in Semirechia. They were Nestorian Christians, in contrast to the Karakitais who pursued a policy of religious tolerance with respect to the local population. The Naimans pursued a policy directed against the Muslims. So the local population met the Mongols as liberators. They had suffered from the Naimans. Although their name seems Mongolian, Naiman means eight in Mongolian language, their remote ancestors were Turks, that is, they are Mongolized Turks. Paleo. Naiman culture was vanished by constant relations with settled peoples and closer communications with Western travelers. Rubruk said that the Naimans and historians were true subjects of Father John. In terms of power, the Naimans can be compared with the Karaites. Some Orientalists localized them to the south of the Selenga in the Upper Horn, Tula and Ongkin. Others think that the Naimans went far to the east, to Karakarum area, where Karaites territory began. The Karaites are usually considered the Turks. Perhaps the Karaites adopted Nestorianism at the very beginning of the second millennium in the circumstances reported by Syrian historian Bar Hebraeus.
To the north of the Naiman area, in the upper reaches of the Yenisei, lived the Kyrgyzes, Turkic tribes whose leaders wore the title of Inal. Approximately in 920, they were expelled from the upper horn by the Kitans, and since then, they didn't play a prominent role in the history. Kure Khan got lost in steppe, and he was saved by Holy Sarkis, St. Sergius. On advice of traders Christians who were in the country, he asked Nestor and Metropolitan Merv, Kurasan Ebedjesa, to come personally or to send a priest to baptize his tribe. Bar Hebraeus. По расположению смотрим, кирийцы были ближе на востоке, ближе в китайской границе. Поэтому Найман все-таки они обитали дальше, северо-западнее. If we look at the location, the Karaites were closer to the Chinese border in the east, and the Naimans lived farther to the northwest. The Chinese defeated the Tatars with the help of the Karaites. So they established mutual relations. The Naimans were similar in terms of population. As stated in the secret story, their culture was different. They didn't take seriously Mongols' way of life. The Naimans even compared them with dogs. It was obvious that they were different peoples. The Chinese Empire itself was recognized as a state at that time. With the help of the Karaites, it fought against its neighbors. We see that China recognized the Karaite state. It was really a powerful state in Central Asia, the most influential one. In the legend about origin of the Mongols, there is no place for them. And nowadays it is difficult to say whether the Karaites were the Mongols who fell under Turkic influence or the Turks on Mongolization stage. In any case, many Karaite rulers were the Turks, and Turk rule is rather a Turkic name than Mongolian. Paleo. To the north of the Karaites area, in the lower reaches of the Selenga, to the south of Lake Baikal, lived the Merkits, a tribe of Turkic or possibly Mongolian race, among whom were also Christians. By the way, some scientists identified them as Mukri, others called them Moho, that is Amur Tangusis. Farther to the north, to the west of the Baikal, lived the Oirats, people of Mongolian race. Their name means Confederates. Here in the 8th century, supposedly, there was a three Khans confederation mentioned in inscriptions in Tsaidan. To the south, on the southern shore of the Karelian to the Kingan, roamed the Tatars, and Peleo considered them as Turkic-speaking tribes. The Tatars, united in the confederation nine Tatars or thirty Tatars, were mentioned in Turkic inscriptions in Tsaidal, 8th century, when they lived perhaps in the lower reaches of the Karelian. In 12th century, the Tatars were formidable warriors and considered the most ferocious of these peoples. They were a great threat to Chinese Kingdom Tsin. That's why Tsin caught in Beijing weakened them, helping Genghis Khan.
Pure Mongols, in a historical sense and in a narrow sense of the word, in the environment where Genghis Khan was born, roamed in the northeastern part of present-day Outer Mongolia, between the Onon and Kerulean. But we will tell you more details about that in our next episode.